Sister McDonald. God bless you. A uh, couple of things. Number one, I do have an outline. Uh, you do have a copy of the, of the uh, base outline that was passed out what seems like now maybe about 100 years ago, uh, and uh, we've been on it for a while. Uh, we would be at point number nine, which is uh, 1 Thessalonians 5.23, and I am prepared to deliver that message tonight, but I want to ask a question. This is an important question uh, that may change the direction of the service. If it doesn't, that's fine. If it does, that's fine too. I feel it's my responsibility uh, to do the best thing I can as your pastor, to make sure that we are constantly educated. That's the pastor's responsibility. He should be apt, and that word means ready, willing, and able to teach at any time. At the same time, it is the pastor's responsibility to make sure that the church is prepared, prepared for what may come, prepared for what lies ahead, or prepared to deal with the issues of the day. And so having said that, the Asbury Revival at Asbury uh, University in Wilmore, Kentucky is still underway. Uh, at Fox News this evening at about four o'clock gave a broadcast that the college is asking now uh, for other people not to come, for people who are parts of other colleges or the community not to come to the property because the building is so full uh, that the fire department is now saying uh, that they're going to have to start keeping so many people out of the building and only letting so many people in. And so it is still making news. It is still underway. A secondary revival is broken out, or a secondary meeting is broken out at Cedarville College uh, in uh, Ohio. Uh, that meeting is not making as much noise and news as the one at Asbury, uh, but if you go online, you can find videos and pictures and statements about that meeting too. 22 colleges across the country have been involved in what's taking place at Asbury University, and those folk have gone back to their colleges. Whether they're seeing something happen back at those colleges and universities, I cannot tell you because that is not making uh, any news at this time. The reason I'm mentioning this is I just want to ask you, does anyone have a question about that meeting they want to ask now? I am willing to do what I can to answer any question this evening. If that takes the rest of this service, so be it. I think it is very, very, very important. If it doesn't, again, I have an outline, primed, locked, loaded, uh, and the hammer is back on it. So uh, anyone have a question? Brother Mike. The college is the Wesleyan Holiness Church. Many people would just simply call, call or Wesley, Wesleyan Holiness background. Many people would call that, many people would call that a Methodist background. Methodist and Wesleyan come from the same genre. Uh, Wesleyan Holiness is a, is a teacher of uh, salvation by faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. They're not a works-based salvation, but they do not believe in eternal security. Uh, and they do not believe in several other tenets and doctrines that we would not agree with. One of those being that you, the only way you can keep yourself saved is you have to live in sinless perfection. That is a, that's a Wesleyan holiness doctrine. Number one, that's the doctrinal background. One of the complaints that is being aired across the country amongst fundamental preachers, uh, fundamental teachers, fundamental broadcasters, uh, is the fact that there is no preaching, uh, that there is all kinds of singing. And so that is an issue uh, that is being broadcast, and it is a very pertinent issue to discuss. Did that answer your question? It does. Well, I think, I think probably for me, the greatest impediment. Now, remember, I was here, we were here Wednesday night. Wednesday night, we took the information about Asbury, uh, the re revival that we had at that time. And I said to the congregation, we preached about revival on Wednesday night. 
Uh, and I would love to see revival. And my statement was, I hope that that was real. I didn't know a lot about it then, other than what we were just getting information. I hope that it was real. Uh, I wanted it to be real. Uh, I want, if something breaks out at Cedarville, I want it to be real. Now, there are numerous things with Cedarville I certainly would not be in agreement with. But at the same time, if there's a revival breaks out, I want it to be real. Right. I want to see a real awakening amongst the people of God. I don't care where the thing starts at. I just want to be part of it somewhere along the lines. Does that make sense? So there are a couple of things uh, that you mentioned that are absolutely uh, imperative. Number one, uh, a revival must be based on God's word. Remember, we shared this morning. If you were in my Sunday school class, if you don't have a Sunday school class, you need to be in mine. But if you are in my Sunday school class this morning, you would have learned that the word of God is the most important issue in a revival. Psalms 138, verse number two, God has magnified his word above his name. It will not return void. It is true. It is eternal. Nothing will happen outside the boundaries of God's word that has anything to do with spirituality. No revival will take place outside the boundaries of God's word. None. And so a couple of things are happening there that, that are very problematic. Uh, and I'll save those and talk about those in a minute. But uh, the, the, the word of God must be preached. And there must be some preaching in that revival because a revival is not for the lost. A revival is for the saved. Right. It's for the saved to understand and realize where they stand spiritually and repent and get themselves awakened and back on the road to service in Christ. And so there has to be some preaching, some teaching, some direction from the word of God for those people to come to the conclusion it's time to wake up right. and it's time to get right. Yeah. And so that, that, that's a couple of things that, that, that must happen. Alice, you had your hand up. You gotta speak a little bit louder, please. I'm gonna to touch on the fact that Wednesday night you did preach, uh, or you did uh, mention about this, and you said something about I hope it's real, I hope it's real. Um, and then you had a Facebook post today that I made it sound like you weren't convinced any longer, and I was wondering. That Facebook post was last night. And I said in that Facebook post, I want to see real revival, but Asbury is not it. Uh, and I can tell you why. There are postings from inside Asbury, from Asbury students and faculty that say point blank, lesbians, homosexuals, transgenders are leading the revival. That can't be true. That can't be a revival because that's, that's outside the boundaries of God's word. Right. Now, could lesbians, transgenders, uh, and homosexuals be part of a revival? They sure could. They could get saved, hallelujah. They could be turning their hearts and lives over to Christ. They could be there listening, learning, hearing, and God could be stirring their heart. They could be part, but they could not lead it. Right. Not only that, but every preacher thus far since the first day has been a woman. Uh, and that is something that uh, the Bible would speak directly against. A women could be part of the revival, and they could even bear some of the leadership responsibilities in some of the areas, but they shouldn't be the speakers, the preachers, the teachers. Right. Those two things, especially the gay, lesbian, transgender thing, knock it right out of the realm of, of being real. Now, I can't help that because I wanted it to be real, but that ruined it. Now, someone was talking to me today, one of my school friends uh, from my old high school days. Actually, she's one of the ladies that came here and visited it with us a few years ago, Doris Anderson. And she asked me, why do you think it isn't real? And I explained to her what I just explained to you was something she didn't know and immediately she agreed that she saw my Facebook posting. Uh, and I've had a few responses to it. And thus, thus far, none have been uh, egregious or mean or threatening. But I believe that is the issue that discredits it for me. Anyone else have a question? Yes, sir, Jones. In the Bible, in the end times, is there revivals? Because does it say in the end times that there wouldn't be? No, the Bible, I think the Bible is specific. During the tribulation period, there would be no revival because there's no Holy Spirit and there's no true church. But at the same time, uh, and that needs to be explained deeper than I just threw it out there. 
But at, at the same time, we are not in that period of time yet. And I believe, I, and I've said this, I believe there will not be a national revival. I do not believe that. I believe the United States of America is already doomed. I believe we're under the judging hand of God. I don't think we will ever recover from where we are. And I think it is downhill for the United States, just the way England has gone downhill since World War II. I think we're headed that same direction. Having said that, I do believe that God is still in the business of, doing re of reviving his people. And I believe that there will be church revivals. I believe there will be revivals in communities. I believe there may be revivals in areas. And I think those things could be dynamic. Uh, could we have a great awakening in this area? Boy, we could. Wouldn't you love to see it? Wouldn't you love to see the power of the Holy Ghost of God sweep through here and do something magnificent? That could happen. Right. And I believe that it is happening. Uh, it certainly is happening in other countries. There are other countries around the world experiencing revival. Hundreds getting saved, thousands getting saved. Uh, if we were to go to the Philippines and we were to go to uh, see um, Edgar Nono uh, in, in uh, Iloilo uh, in the Philippines, uh, he, or I'm sorry, on Negro Island in the Philippines, uh, he said, you come and I, I'll give you 5,000 people a night to preach to. And he said they love preaching. Hundreds will get saved. And that's going on around the world. Not necessarily here but going on around the world. So I do believe there's still going to be revivals. Anyone else? Yes, Miss Lynn. Well, I've heard now, please speak just a little louder. I had heard that they really were only catering to college students, that they really didn't want a lot of older people Well, I haven't seen that, and I didn't see that in any videos. I saw older people there. I think the college is concerned about just bringing people in from the community, folk just walking in from the community, walking into their campus, walking into their buildings. I'm certain that the college has concerns about that. If I was administrating that college, I would have concerns about that. And so there would have to be a way uh, to reach the community if they were going to involve the community. How that is, uh, how, what that way is right now, I would be uncertain. But I do not know that they're cutting out old people. Now, that may be, that may be accurate, but I, I don't know that. Uh, I will say, uh, I think probably what needs to happen in that movement is, is, is old people need to come in. They need somebody to give them guidance and leadership. Now, let me make another statement. This is my perception. This is not something that I necessarily know. This is my perception. I perceive that this may have got started right. When it got started, it may have got started right with the right motives. And then as we mentioned in here the other night, it was co-opted. Uh, some people came in and said, no, this is what we're going to do. This is our time to shine. This is how we're going to run this thing. And so those people, and by the way, Christians are usually a very timid uh, people because we're supposed to have humble hearts and we're supposed to be, uh, have an attitude of servitude. And so it's easy to run Christians off and take over their spot. And I think that may be some of what happened here. I would like to think that it got the right start and then it was co-opted, and which basically every time the devil comes in and co-opts something, he ruins it. And I think that's exactly what's happened here. But now I say that, that thing is still growing. And again, they're, they're talking about some way to cut down on the crowd. And so just because it's growing though, doesn't mean it's right. right. Roger. I think it's possible for someone to go there with a, a, a heart as desire to revival, and God still do something to them, even though it's not real revival, but God can do something to them because they have a desire just to see to the if, if somebody went and looked at it and they were moved by it, could God do something in their heart? Is that your question? I think so. Yeah, I, I think God could. And I think maybe that has happened to a lot of people. But but that is but that's not necessarily revival. That, that may be a personal revival, which by the way, we should be experiencing personal revival every day. Amen. Every day when we get up, we should be experiencing a personal revival that day. We should get out of bed. We should say, Lord, yesterday I had this problem. Yesterday I did this thing. Today I want to do right. I want to. And so every day we should be taking a step closer to the Lord, which is a personal revival in our hearts. When we come in on Sunday, there ought to be weekly personal revival here. You know, we ought to say, you know, preacher, you hit me right between the eyes. I'm going to the altar. Instead of arguing with the Lord and denying the Holy Spirit and worrying about what's for dinner. So we, we need to have that going on every single day. Yes, sir. Well, I think that's 